The FL Studio Direct Wave Sampler instrument introduces multi-velocity sampling combined with a full-blown synthesis section into the repertoire of sampling capabilities in FL Studio. It even includes the ability to sample VST plugins, automatically building the sample program including finding loop points in the samples. The top part of the plugin, called the Zone Window, is made up of the sample list, containing all samples used in the patch, and the samples that appear here now are from a VSTi that I sampled into Direct Wave. Below that is the zone mapper, where you map a sample to a pitch and velocity range. Below the zone window are three tabs, program containing global controls, zone containing sample synthesis parameters, and the sample tab, where you control the sample start and looping functionality. To the right is the direct wave browser. Use this to find samples to use, as well as load direct wave programs. Clicking on the options button above the LED output reveals other options associated with the plugin, as well as the VSD plugin sampling section. A sample can be added by double-clicking its name in the browser, and a new zone will automatically be created. To add more zones, right-click in the sample list and select New Zone. Double-clicking a sample name in the browser will now add it to the new zone. The sample will appear in the zone mapper below. If the sample has key map information embedded, DirectWave will automatically map it to the correct keys, as you can see here. Otherwise, adjust the zone range and velocity split using the sample control points at the top and bottom of the active sample zone box. The box itself can be placed on different pitches by dragging and dropping. Each zone has a root key associated with it, which is indicated by the red key on the keyboard. You can change the root key by right-clicking on another note on the keyboard. Changes you make here will be reflected in the sample list columns above. A sample that you select in either the sample list or in the zone mapper can then be edited in the sample tab. Here, you can define the sample start, the loop start and end points, as well as the looping type. You can also sample directly into a new zone. To do this, you'll need to insert direct wave as an effect on a track. You will first need to insert a new zone. Press the monitor switch to hear the input, and when you are ready to begin sampling, press record. Direct Wave will wait for input, showing a yellow record button, and will begin recording, showing a red button, the moment input is received. Now let's go back to the samples I started off with. Once you have edited your sample loop points, you'll probably want to then affect the sample using the synthesis features found in the zone tab. Note that these parameters can be set per zone, or globally for all zones. Set the button in the edit section to current to edit the current zone, or global to edit all zones. The zone tab is made up of the standard synthesis modules at the top and effects at the bottom. The synthesis modules include a main section containing pitch, gain and panning, two variable type filters which can operate in series or in parallel, and you turn a filter on by selecting any type other than off. Also included are an amplitude envelope as well as two modulation envelopes, and two LFOs with variable waveforms. Finally, there is a modulation matrix that allows you to modulate up to 16 parameters using a variety of sources and going to a large range of destinations. To assign modulation, choose a source in the top drop-down and a destination in the bottom drop-down. Then use the amount knob to control the positive and negative effect the modulation has on the destination. The effects are made up of a ring mod, decimator, quantizer and phaser. Each effect is activated by clicking on the switch next to the name. DirectWave contains several more processor-intensive effects in the Program tab, Delay, Reverb and Chorus, which can assign varying amounts of signal from each zone to be sent. Control this amount using the Send knobs. Note that editing while switching between current and global modes can result in a little confusion. For example, if you select a zone and change its amp envelope sustain level while in current mode, and then you switch to global mode and change the global sustain amount, that change will then override the changes made in current mode. However, changing a setting in global mode does not then override all other settings made in current mode. Perhaps the best practice would be to initially make all alterations in global mode and then go back and edit individual settings in current mode. Once you have finished editing your program, you'll want to save it. Go to the Program tab and click on the area below where it says Name and choose Save or Save As. From here you can also create new programs, open programs, rename the current program, set the output that the current program is going to, as well as open up the Direct Wave Options window. You can also set up to 128 alternative programs loaded within the current program that can then be altered using MIDI program change commands. A great feature of the Direct Wave Sampler is the ability to sample other VST plugins, great for giving you access to otherwise CPU-intensive sounds without the performance hit. To do this, open the Direct Wave Options by clicking on the Options button and then open a VST plugin by clicking on the Open Dialog button and browsing to where your VST plugins are, and select the plugin. 
If the plugin has presets associated with it, you can select the patch you want to use in the selected program dropdown. If you need to edit the patch, then open up the plugin interface by clicking on the up pointing arrow. Once you're happy with the sound and ready to sample, set up the sampler for what you need. Set the lowest and highest key numbers you want to sample, as well as how many notes per sample range you want. I.e., if you set it to 1, then every note will be sampled. If you set it to 5, then every 5 notes will be sampled, and the notes in between will reference this sample. Set the number of velocity splits. Remember the key step and velocity split settings will affect how many samples will actually be created. This combined with the sampling length will affect how big the final pool of samples will be. Once you're ready to go, hit the process button and DirectWave will do its thing, even finding suitable loop points for longer samples. Hopefully this brief overview has given you a sense of the sampling power available in the FL Studio Direct Wave plugin.